You're listening to the KSO Show, and it's almost game day in Manhattan. If you're listening to this Friday night, if you're listening to this Saturday morning, it's, well, it is game day. Um, I'm joined by Grant Flanders. I'm Derek Young. You're listening to the KSO Show. Time to preview the Kansas State Wildcats' third game of the season. It's against the Nevada Wolfpack. And, you know, we'll jump right into it right now. Grant, uh, does the winner of this game become ranked next week? 3-0? I don't know. I think I would lean yes, but we've seen K-State get disrespected in the past, and Nevada's not a a powerhouse football program in their own right as good as they are this season. So um, I'll just hedge here and say I'd say yes, but it's probably going to be no. (laughs) Here's – and here's – I'll justify it a little bit. It'll kind of seem like a weird answer on my part. I think if Nevada's the one that – you know, escapes Manhattan three and zero. I think they could be ranked mm-hmm. because they're they're going to get credit to, for being a group of five school that is already three and zero with two wins against Power Five opponents. Because obviously they beat Cal twenty two seventeen in Week One. If it's Kansas State that's three and zero, you only have a one Power Five win. Uh, maybe not get the credit that you deserve for beating a decent Nevada club. Yep. I'm not sure that they would be ranked. They would they would probably take one more win. Um, that being against Oklahoma State the following week. In Stillwater. Yeah, yep. so that, well, let's, uh, let's get into, I guess, the three phases of the game here offensively. Um, you know, what, what does Kansas State have to do to kind of survive without Skylar Thompson at the helm? As, and if you've been living under a rock, Will Howard is the starting quarterback this week. Skylar Thompson out indefinitely per, yep. per head coach Chris Kleiman. I think uh, they're shooting for the Oklahoma game as his return at this point. Is that an ambitious timeline? Uh, we'll find out soon enough. It could be, it could not be. So I think they're shooting for the Oklahoma game in, ter- in terms of his return. But with Will Howard at the helm, what does the offense kind of need to do better than we've seen the first two weeks to become successful, or at least enough to pull out the win against Nevada at home? There's two things that need to be improved that I can point out, and I'll I'll just start with those two. And, and the first one's the real obvious from what happened last game, and that's Will Howard has to make right decisions no matter what. No matter what else is going on in the game, um, he just can't turn it over. That is the bottom line. Um, especially against this really high-powered Nevada offense. It's especially paramount that he does not turn the ball over. And the second thing is that right side of the offensive line needs to be better, especially when Will Howard's at the helm because he he really needs it. He needs the time to go through his progressions. He needs the ability to find his guys downfield because the one thing that K-State has been good at this year is their skill positions can't really be um, looked at for anything so far. They are open downfield, wide receivers, and um, Amater Bebe, the tight end, needs to be found by Will Howard. That needs to happen. The the skill players have been doing their job. Deuce Fawn, Joe Irvin's really shown some stuff that makes me think as the season progresses, he's going to continue to be really good. So I think the two things need to be is Will Howard just being solid and not turning the ball over and the offensive line also being solid. And the, the skill players in this game will be to their advantage. Yeah, you got to win in the trenches. And, and for me, with the offensive line, it's more about pass protection. I think that's the area of the game mm-hmm. where absolutely I don't know drop the ball is the right word, but it's definitely an area where they probably have underperformed thus far through two games this season. Um, they have to be better in that regard. I think they're you know run blocking wise, Kansas State's yeah. doing what they want on the ground for the most part. Not necessarily a huge concern there, although that just made me think of something else. I think the quarterback run game has to be a big item this week um, because I think. Will Howard could use that not just for his own confidence, but as another you know angle of how this offense can be successful. Because I do think you're, you're still going to be limited, you know, um, at least a little bit with having the number two quarterback yeah. Will Howard out there rather than Skylar Thompson. Um, I think you're going to have to throw under center some. I think the, you know there's a big tendency right now to run under center a lot of the time. I do think having a drop back passing game from under center is probably going to be paramount or it could be play action, but at least show the ability or the willingness to throw while under center. If, if that's what you're going to do in terms of being under center and shotgun on the, and I just mentioned it, but on the, the adverse of that, I would say when you're in shotgun or when you run the ball, do it out of shotgun more often, because if you're just running out of under center, um, I think you become pretty predictable, not only because it has been 
has it been an overwhelming tendency by the Wildcats on offense this year? I think when you run under center, you take the the uh, the, the threat of the quarterback run game away. And if Will Howard's not being as efficient or effective throwing the ball, and certainly he has shown, you know, you know, ten, uh, I guess an inability at times to be able to do do a whole lot in the passing game. If there isn't the threat of a passing game from Kansas State. Um, running under center is going to be harder to do because there is no threat of the QB run game because you can at least run the ball if you have some kind of threat. And it doesn't have to be the pass game. It can also be the, the QB run game. And then I agree. You said it. Um, Got to take care of the football. I, like, I don't – it wouldn't bother me if they really, you know, buckled down in terms of what they throw out there offensively in terms of – they can be very conservative because yeah. I think you can be very conservative in this game and win it. It might be – it might be the recipe to win this game is to be very conservative. And and obviously you're going to have to take your shots sometimes. Yeah. Because you can't not take shots with Will Howard. You have to at least um, keep the defense honest in that in that way. But being conservative at least allows you to take care of the football more. And I think a positive turnover margin, even if you're being conservative, is, is an avenue for a victory this Saturday. I think last year some of the best Will Howard we saw was when Messingham was being more conservative – Get the get the get the defense off guard, and then you do take a shot, because that's when you did see times when Will Howard could be successful. Is yes, lean on that run game, especially this season when you have two backs that I mean, obviously Deuce Vaughn is a stud, but Joe Irvin, uh, you know, Deuce Vaughn's one A. I mean, you don't want to go one B yet, but I think by the end of the season, Joe Irvin could be one B in that scenario, and lean on those two guys. And in the run game, like you said, I think play action in this game, um, in really any game with these these types of uh, backs in the backfield would be very beneficial. Could open things up for Will Howard. Hope they're working on that in practice right now, getting him comfortable. And I just think, yeah, I think the play calling should be quick passes for Will Howard. Don't make him take many shots, but pick your shots when you do need to because that needs to happen. And find a Malik Knowles downfield. Get his confidence going that way. Yeah, timing will be important from Courtney Messingham on when to push the right buttons and when. Um, and I can feel a lot of the listeners right now just their eyes rolling in the back of their head at the thought of being conservative because I know they don't want to. But if you're not conservative, you do run the risk of Will Howard throwing you out of the football game. And we he just ne- saw that. He, yeah, yeah, he nearly did against an FCS program. That's an, no, not not trying to be you know overly critical here, but he left two picks out there and one would have been another pick six that really would have changed yep. that game to a whole nother level. Oh, so. Abso- absolutely. So I, I get it. People hate conservative play calling and, and, you know, in ways I do too, but there are some, some games where you can, where conservative play calling is going to win you a football game. This very well could be that yeah. game because like I said, you have to take into account if you're not conservative, what can happen? And it, and you have a better chance in some games, in some situations of being conservative and winning than not being conservative and winning just because you're not gonna you're not gonna be Nevada with, with turning the ball over as much as Will Howard showed a propensity of doing so last week. You know, if hey, if you start that game and he gets into a little bit of a rhythm sure, and he's yes. not turning the ball over, he's being pretty effective through the air. There's a lot of rhythm. You know, they're they're going great on offense then yeah start to open up a little bit maybe turn him loose but you you don't turn him loose until he shows you and uh shows you or gives you a reason to trust him and the one thing i'll add to that because some people might be like well he had that one first drive last game and it may have opened up the playbook for them and got them excited but again that's a different circumstance now will howard has a whole week to get ready that i think you're exactly right they do need to get him confident get him comfortable he finds a rhythm continue that one of the best drives with will howard last week against southern illinois was that 14 play drive to in their first possession of the second half (laughs) they ran it 13 times (laughs) exactly 13 times out of 14 plays Mm -hmm. they just missed a kick too and that's tate and winkle has to be better as well because that was an easy kick that he missed. yeah that might have been or maybe that was the one he made yeah you're probably right he was one i just remember climbing did get confused in your question because he was like we didn't even come away with points because you know he's hard on his offense knowing that he needed to be better yep but that was the first time in a while that they come out absolutely were effective on offense in in the third quarter actually so maybe something meaningful there defensively um tall task carson strong maybe a number one overall pick we'll see um he presents challenges. He doesn't get fooled. You're not going to fool him. You're not going to trick him pre-snap for the most part. If you're blitzing, he probably knows where it's coming and when. If you're mixing up coverages, you're probably 
he's probably going to know what cover your coverage are in. Yeah. So you're not going to fool him in that way. So what do you got to do? You got to overwhelm him. You got to make him uncomfortable some way. You can do that with the pass rush. And that's the thing is this, I feel really comfortable about this defense against Carson Strong, even though he is highly touted, had two really good games to start things off and, um, you know, uh, found a way to really put it on Cal. I feel like, I feel like this Nevada team could find a little rhythm, but not if this defense, like you said, gets back there, makes Carson Strong uncomfortable, unlike he has all year. Might be one of the best defensive lines he sees all season, especially when he gets into conference play. Like this is a, this might be one of the toughest games all season, especially for their offense. And I think, especially on the second line, if Daniel Green can continue his amazing play with what he's been able to do, stopping the run and also be effective in the pass game, that's going to be key with his length. And then Cody Fletcher, you know, I mean, Kleiman said it yesterday, they complement each other really well out there. They do both really play hard. And then Green brings you that dynamic, you know, athletic player long that can make some plays. And he's he is becoming the player that they needed him to be that we weren't sure that he was going to be before. He's going to be key. And then the secondaries to see what they can do. If Carson Strong, if they do set up the offense and realize this, this defense is going to be back here every play, we need to start doing some short passes and figuring some things out, that secondary needs to be ready to make some tackles this game. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, we'll put it this way. We'll find out how good this defense is um, this week. I'm not so sure. And they've been great so far. You know, almost got a shutout against Stanford and Arlington. They did pitch a shutout in the second half against Southern Illinois. Really won the football game because the offense couldn't get out of its own way. Um, so the defense, you know, has a lot, a lot of credit for the fact that Kansas State is sitting here 2-0. and but we'll find out how good they are, right, in this week. Yeah. Because Carson Strong's going to test them. Because if if you don't get home, your secondary is going to be tested. They have three really good wide receivers. And, and we'll see how good these defensive backs are. Can Echo Boydo be reach his mm-hmm. potential and play up to his caliber? Can Julius Brintz emerge and become that guy? His 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 uh, coverage has been elite this season. Yeah. He's just got to finish the play, find the ball a little bit more, of course. Justin Gardner has a lot of length. He, uh, he's let the defense get behind him sometimes just because he isn't the fastest player mm-hmm. in the world. T. Denson hasn't played an overwhelming amount, but, he, you know, he, the, he they're, they're going to probably target him if he's on the football field just because he's someone that doesn't have a lot of experience. And, you know, the other three do. Absolutely. So so T. Denson could get targeted, and we'll, and we'll find out how good he is and how much ready he's uh, – how ready he is – for the task, the challenge at hand, um, the safeties, you know, and maybe we'll find out if I'm correct or not. Not, I'm not worried nearly as much as safety. It's funny that I'm worried about the corners because I do think this is one of the more talented cornerback rooms that Kansas State's had in a while. Julius Brent, Echo Boydo, Justin Gardner, T. Denson is a great foursome right there. Mm-hmm. Um, even the Nichols have played well, especially Reggie Stubblefield. But this is just a different kind of challenge that we have not yet seen them meet this year. And I yeah. think they haven't been as crisp or as sharp this year as what I anticipated while entering the season. You know, conversely, I've been extremely impressed with the safeties. They probably over exceeded my expectations thus far. I think TJ Smith and Rusty are two of the best defensive players on the team at this point in the season. So I'm not necessarily as worried about them, but they're going to be, you know, obviously you know, Tested. Every, every, every single position's important and critical in every game. But, you know, they're probably going to be even more because Carson Strong's going to want to take some shots and they'll have to be that security blanket over the top. And if they're not there, you know, he'll make them pay. But, you can't leave these guys out on an island. If you mm-hmm. just want your cover, if you just want to play coverage all game and rely on your secondary, six or seven guys in the secondary, you're probably going to get picked apart at some point. That's why getting pressure on Carson Strong is really probably where the game is won because as as good as you you can have a really good secondary, but if you don't get home, yeah, a first round pick's going to tear you apart. I'm going to say this: even if Skylar Thompson was the starting quarterback going into this game. I would still be more worried about this game than really any other on the schedule because this offense is that good and it's the first time they're going to see this offense this year because the last two weeks have been offenses that are a little more not the way college football is is headed. You know, uh, uh, SIU had a very dynamic offense where they did a lot of things differently um, and, and Stanford was more of your conservative offense ground and pound spread you out every so often very rarely this will be the time they actually see an offense spread it you know they're used to that in practice what they did probably a lot in the offseason was going against those the, that type of an offense to get ready for the big 12 play and it you know somewhat 
what they want to try to do themselves. But the fact is, if this defense is not prepared for the, the first game where they will see a gunslinger spread them out West Coast offense, this is the game where I could see the defense get caught off guard and maybe Nevada puts close to 30 points on the board. Who knows? If Nevada gets 30. I it's mean, tough for yeah. Will Howard to try to match that. Yeah, if, yeah, I don't know if they can win if Nevada gets thirty. That, that's an it's interesting. Tough. Just being inter- <laughs> yeah, that would be difficult. I would right now. I guess that's a good question to consider right now. If you ask me, Nevada scores thirty, does Kansas State win? I say probably not. I think you're yeah. right to hold them under thirty. Um, it'll be a quicker game too. Obviously, Nevada probably more similar to Southern Illinois than they are Stanford, but obviously still some differences between those two as well. I I just think. Your secondary can play really well against a guy like Carson Strong. He's still going to get you. Mm-hmm. So I think it comes down to the defensive line. Absolutely. comes down to the defensive line, no doubt. They have to affect Carson Strong because he also has receivers that even if the secondary is right on him, guys yeah, that can make plays. Come down with the ball. Exactly. It was just like what happened against Stanford. They had some receivers make some good plays mm-hmm. so against Julius Prince, for example. And, and Joe Klanerman, that, I mean, he's, I think, called a better game being on the sidelines. So maybe that, that little switcheroo um, was effective and probably what they needed. Because I think he's he's kind of dialed things up at the right time, and that'll probably be you know if if that continues, you know a feather in their cap in this game. Because I think obviously you're not going to surprise Carson Strong. I don't think you're not going to really trick him. But if you call the right blitzes in the right situations, and guys just get home, yeah. then, then obviously that could be big. Because like I said, <laughs> it's going to come down to how much can you affect him and just make him a little uncomfortable? Because if you don't, it doesn't matter how good the coverage is. I think you have to send Duke almost every time with DK. Make this dude uncomfortable. Get back in there. I mean, yes, I guess the thing is we saw against Stanford, they dropped Trussell back one time, and that that really affected the play. So, yes, do that sometimes. Drop the defensive end like they like to do back and affect, make Carson Strong look over that guy and, and maybe make a mistake. But that's the thing. Like you said earlier, you're not going to see many mistakes out of Carson Strong get in the backfield send your best dudes back there DK and Duke Eli Huggins has been really good at getting the backfield disrupting things use that to your advantage pickle horn all these guys have to be really on the money which they have in the first two games but especially this game affecting Carson Strong I see a tight game uh, I think a lot you of ready pe- to pick, baby. Uh, I think a lot of people do. Uh, not not necessarily. I'm saying in a tight okay. game. Yeah, I I agree. I, you're gonna see. I I've got my pick in my mind. It's a tight, tight yeah, a tight game. But in those tight games, you know, the, the it's gonna you know the teams that wins are the ones that win special teams. Yep. Win That's... win win penalties and win turnovers. Absolutely, all those. So it's it's who do you think? Because I think that's what's going to decide the game. I think. Maybe Kansas State offense can do enough. Maybe the defense can do enough, but they're going to need a little help. Can they get help from special teams? Can they take care of the football? If you don't take care of the football, you're not going to win. That's just that this you know, not in this game. They're not going to take no. their. If Will Howard gets turnover happy, it's probably over. Yeah. Um, if you are not being, if you're the one that's committing the penalty, it's too it's too tight of a game. And in a tight game like this. It's the team that does the little things right in special teams, turnovers, and penalties. Is that Kansas State? We'll, we'll find out. Um, what do you got? Usually. Uh, we'll, we'll go with this. Yeah. Your top offensive performer, Kansas State. Okay. Top offensive performer, I'm going uh, on the ground game. I'm going to be cliche here and go Deuce Vaughn. I mean, he's got to be said. I don't even know if he said his name last week. I think we went Malik Knowles, and I think you went offensive lineman or something like that. Maybe, maybe not. But we didn't say Deuce Vaughn last week. This is a week he's got to be really good. He's going to be really good. So I, I, it's an easy pick by me. And Cal uh, or Cal rushed five and a half, five, over five and a half yards per game on them last week, or was that two weeks ago? Whatever that was, whenever that game was, this defense or this, yeah, this Nevada defense could be very susceptible to a huge Deuce Vaughn game on the ground, which he's shown the first two games this year that he's also not just a great pass catcher; he's an all-around back. When Will Howard started preparing for full games last season, and had all week to prepare. I think we saw Brian Moore turn into quite a weapon for him. Um, mm-hmm. That little security blanket. I could oh, see. Absolutely. I could see the same thing happening. You know, this week, yeah, next week. Is. So I'm going Daniel and Matter Bebe. Yes. Uh, well, maybe he plays more. Maybe he doesn't. Um, I don't know if his snap count will change, but I think his target count could change, and that that can be a huge difference for Will Howard. So I'll go with Daniel and Matter Bebe on offense. Defensively, I'll go first here, and mm-hmm. and I'll say. Like they're going to win. It comes down to the pass rush and you know the big splash play. 
Uh, Felix Onodike was that guy last week, although I think some of it was created by some of his buddies too. And he Absolutely. was the recipient of a little assistance. And and um, I, and I think the the guy that can make the splash play, we saw him make the crazy play against Stanford, you know, spin move on the double Do the team. Double. Yeah. yeah, this sack last week was also one-on-one beautiful by yeah. himself. Yeah, he, he could really sink those hits and bend the edge. So Khalid Duke, I can – you know, if Khalid Duke can really take over a football game, I think – I don't know if it's too soon for him to yeah. do so, but he, he has the ability to take over a football game, much like White Hoover did in stretches as well. I'll go middle of the field. My guy that I think is a top three player on this defense might be crazy to say right now, but Daniel Green, he's showing that he can hold down the middle of that field, and he's going to be very paramount in both the pass and run game. So, which, I mean, especially – he, this one's going to be interesting. This will be a test for Daniel Green. Can he really be effective in, a, in an offense, going against an offense that's going to be pass heavy? Yeah. Special teams. Everyone says, oh, you need maybe if, we're going to have a, if you're going to have a big play come in special teams, you know, maybe a touchdown. I'm not necessarily thinking that way here. I, it almost happened last week, and yeah. I, I pointed out, I don't know if everyone caught it. Julius Brent almost blocked a kick. Yeah. So watch out for maybe a block punt, a block kick in this game that could really that shift length. momentum. And you can, with that length and speed, I watch out for Julius Brent. So as special teams, maybe Julius Brent's coming off the edge and blocking a punt, blocking a kick, because he came close to doing so against Southern Illinois. I like that pick. And, you know, I don't want to go Phillip Brooks here either, even, that's, even though that's the easy pick. I'm going to go the other returner that could get going, that usually when he gets the ball in his hands and he can get in space, makes things happen. If Malik Knowles gets kicked to this game, he could bust one wide open, take it to the house, and get the, just like he did against Mississippi State early last year or two years ago. Um, I think that could be a, a, a scenario where I think Malik Knowles could get going and get him really fired up for this game. Um, but, man, oh, this is going to – are we getting into picks right now? Yeah, this you is, got this it. Is it. Okay, I mean, you know, I, I yeah, I think – K-State's really going to, I think, show a lot of good things this this week, but also still not enough to, to get the victory against a really good Nevada offense. That's where I'm at. So 28-24, I do see a tight, tight game. Nevada comes out on top. Um, K-State, you know, probably might even get a chance to, to win it at the end, you know, but Will Howard's going to have to make the plays. And right now, I do not fully trust will howard to be a guy even in a tight game because this could be a game where he doesn't have many mistakes and it still is 28 24 three minutes left in the fourth will howard has the ball at the 20 yard line to go drive and win it i just don't trust him to get that done yet and it's kind of where i'm at right now is i think this defense could be good i think they can get maybe one big defensive player special teams play but will it be enough to get in the end zone or maybe a couple times because that might be what they need or at least set them up once maybe one pick six and one really long return to set Will Howard up nicely. Even those could really help. But until I see it, I'm I'm sticking with the Wolf Pack this week. Yeah, I think Kansas State would need a non-offensive score or at least be set up and with a really, really short field more than once, yes. two or three times to really come out with enough points to win this game. And it's hard to lean on that and expect that. So I I do have Nevada being victorious as well. I just don't think Kansas State's going to get enough offense in this one. I'd love to be wrong, and we'll find out if I am. But I think it would take Kansas State, maybe with a defensive or special teams touchdown, and then having at least another one or maybe even two possessions where you're operating on a short field and you take over on Nevada side of the field and come up with points that way because asking – for prolonged drives, the length of the field without turning it over seems like a tall ask right now for Will Howard and the K-State offense. If they had Skylar Thompson, I think maybe Kansas State squeaks out a win without Skylar yeah. Thompson. I think I'm not sure they get enough offense, and I think Nevada squeaks out the win. So I'll just I'm thinking 23-20 Wolfpack. And I asked this on our you know big picture implications, but now that we have our predictions and we both think it's a tight game. And if Will Howard doesn't turn over the ball um, and it's still a tight loss, do you go with Will Howard against Oklahoma State? Yeah, if he doesn't turn the ball over, I think it's his. If he turns it over once. Like, that's mean. the thing. Is it probably needs to be multiple turnovers and in a tight loss for them to it make would, it. it would, I think it would have to be something reflective of what we saw against Southern Illinois where he really, really struggled. Yeah. I think – um, that would have, and it would probably have to happen in the first half. I yeah. think so. That's what. But uh, I'm so, hoping he doesn't. I hope he can 
figure things out and be a game manager and get it figured out. Mm-hmm. Because if not, Jaron Lewis might it, see it, the field. Yeah, it would. It would. He would have to. He would have to force their hand. I think. Absolutely. Um, and I think so. It'd have to be reflective of what we saw against Southern Illinois. But you got, got uh, this, Will. You Come got on, baby. 28 24 Nevada. Yes. And I got 23 20 Nevada. Um, let's hope we're wrong. You've been listening to the KSO show <laughs> for Grand Flanders. I'm Derek Young. Tell your, Tell your friends 2 0. So don't, don't go anywhere, baby. <laughs>